how can women all around the world be doing this? And I was an Olympic champion. I can't fucking get my child to sleep. Mm. Like I, why can't? I must not be enough. I'm not loving her enough. I'm not doing enough for her. And it's clear because she's not sleeping and mm. she's angry and now I'm angry and now I want to throw her out the window. Mm. And that was pretty, that was a pretty quick um, dissension for me, like mm. into postnatal depression, mm. which was quite shocking. It was... Um, Did anyone know? Were you talking about this at the time or was it you keeping it to yourself? My husband could tell that I was not well. I don't think he fully understood because you don't want to, you don't talk, like you don't catch up with your girlfriends with your babies and, you know, you have your girlfriend whose baby is sleeping 10 hours a night mm. and then I'm like, yeah, I want to throw mine out the window. <laughs> yeah. um, I, mean, I mean, I probably should have because that would probably have helped lighten that burden a little bit and make, made it less heavy for me. Yeah. yeah. But it, it wasn't something that I felt like I could articulate. No. And, you know, especially... I, I guess it's this the ego of, of having been someone who's achieved something in, in life that you go, oh, why, why can't I do this? Like this should mm. just be, this is something that everybody does and yet I can't do it. And it got to a point where <clears throat> um, Poppy was eight months old. I was going through the motions of doing the self-care stuff. I was going to the gym. It was a period of time where she hated being in the car, but I bonded her into the car and two minutes into the drive, she just starts screaming. And it was like this moment, I, I, it's, I can't describe it in any other way than it was like a, I flicked a switch and I just screamed at her, like guttural, animalistic screaming. I, like in my head I was telling her to shut up, but I don't think I was actually articulating any words at that stage. And the, the drive from my house to the gym was about 25 minutes and literally for the entire trip I was screaming. And I get to the gym and I realised that I had no recollection of driving. Gosh. Like I had no recollection of, of getting to the gym. I just knew that I was screaming. Poor Poppy had cried herself to sleep. And I got to the, I got to the gym and I was just like, I'm, I'm not okay. I'm not well. Like this, this is not normal. Mm. This isn't how people, like a, a new mother should be responding to her eight month old baby. Uh, so I had, I gave my husband a call at that moment and said I needed to get help. And then the next phone call that I made was to my GP to, to start that process of, of getting some really much needed help that I needed and support. How, how did your husband respond? He, well, he was the one who said you need to call yeah. the doctor. Um, that was his kind of initial thing, but I think he, I think he realized that it was mm. pretty dark. Um, again, I don't think until I actually wrote the book, I don't think he actually really understood how dark it was. But yeah, it was it was good to start that process of of sharing because for me that does really lighten that burden and it and it ultimately having started to share my story and to share these experiences when you're ready, it does help lighten that burden and it helps you realize that you're not crazy and you're not mm. alone. And, you know, I can see why women who don't have good support networks, who don't have good support systems, who may not be able to articulate what they're feeling, go and harm their children like that. And that was a really s profound moment for me because I was like, I am, you know, relatively well off. I have great support networks. I have great family and friends. And here I am thinking harmful thoughts on my mm. baby. Like, it's no wonder people get to these really dark moments in mm. their life. 